Um, I will be discussing some of the surgical techniques that we've developed at the Allen Institute for uh, simultaneous brain-wide recordings from multiple neuropixels probes. Um, so obviously to understand uh, brain-wide behavior, we need to uh, be able to record from many different brain regions simultaneously. Uh, but in order to do this, obviously, we need to insert ma many narrow pixels into the brain at the same time at specific targets in order to understand uh, the neural dynamics that are shaping these behaviors that we're interested in researching. Uh, common techniques and approaches to achieve this end previously have been to either create multiple small craniotomies for every probe that you're going to be recording from. Uh, this has been the typical approach. Uh, at the Allen Institute previously, we've also done uh, large cranial windows over the visual cortex in order to study visual behavior. But for this talk, um, I'm going to talk about a recent surgery that we've been developing that consists of uh, an, a replacement of the entire dorsal skull with an implant that allows uh, recordings uh, with basically arbitrary placement of neuropixels um, with many neuropixels probes. Uh, so the skull replacement uh, is a 3D printed uh, plastic cap, basically, with many different holes already pre-made uh, pre into it So uh, for different recording spots uh, that we want to perform with our neuropixels probes. This is printed on our uh, 3D printed with a biocompatible resin so that this can be uh, implanted on the mouse's skull uh, as a replacement for its skull and have it be biocompatible and not cause uh, many issues for the mouse. Um, so you can see how uh, the size of this implant uh, with relation to the mouse's skull, as you can see, the majority of the dorsal, the dorsal skull is removed and the dorsal cortex is ex exposed. And then we also have a uh, head frame that we have designed that fits this implant as well, so that together they look um, like this picture on uh, the far right, where we have the, um, the skull replacement implant in the center surrounded by the head frame. Uh, you can see the head frame is a sort of ring shaped because we do remove a pretty large portion of the skull. So the the ring shape of the head frame kind of provides stability. So for the implantation procedure, we have um, once the mouse, you know, once we remove the scalp, uh, we have a tracer that we position relative to Bregma for this mouse uh, that we then trace out the outline of the craniotomy, uh, score the skull around where the craniotomy is going to be. Uh, we cement the head frame into place. And then after that, we perform the craniotomy and durotomies. Um, for this surgery, we do perform two durotomies on both sides of the uh, uh, on both sides of the sagittal sinus, just because the dura is highly connected to the blood vessels there, and we don't really want to damage that too much. Um, and after that, we press the implants into place and cement it into place. Uh, and um, and so the benefits of this technique are that because the craniotomy is always in the same shape and in the same location, uh, the, su the surgery is very consistent and repeatable. And if you need to change the uh, coordinates of where you're recording from, the modification can simply be done by just moving the location of the holes in this 3D printed implant. Um, also, because the surgery is completed um, about a month or so in advance of the actual recording, uh, this gives the brain uh, plenty of time to heal and recover, and we're limiting the potential for tissue damage right before the experiment begins. Uh, so then right before we actually perform the recording, uh, for the implantation, we cover the implant with uh, this kind of stiff uh, silicone elastomer to protect the surface of the brain while the mouse is recovering. Uh, but then right before we record, we remove that, as uh, you can see in the left picture, and then we replace it with Duragel. Um, and the Duragel, when we use it to cover the entire surface of the implant, it's very good, as uh, Annie said, to protect the surface of the brain. Uh, we have not had any issues with neuropixels, uh, with Duragel sticking to the neuropixels probes. The one downside of it that I would say is the fact that it's not conductive. So you do have to make sure that the mouse is properly grounded when you're using the setup. Uh, here you can see that we have a ground wire. Uh, we have a special hole in the implant for the ground wire that we have to insert into the hole before we apply the Duragel to make sure that there is grounding contact with the surface of the brain. And then uh, when we actually, so here are some examples of us doing some recordings from this, uh, uh, from a mouse implanted with this. And you can see that, uh, as Annie said, we just 
we can insert the neuropixels probes right through the duragel. The duragel is very soft and um, it doesn't hinder the insertion of the neuropixels at all. Um, and actually, because we also use a, a cap uh, to protect uh, basically the duragel uh, when the mouse is not being recorded from, the duragel also lasts for a very long time um, and the brain stays very healthy. So for instance, as we said, um, we often do the, this implantation procedure about a month or so before we actually record from this animal. And you can see in these pictures that the brain stays in very good health over the course of this month. And we usually don't have any problems uh, penetrating the surface with the neuropixels probes even after such a long time. Uh, so despite the, si despite the fact that we have these this very large craniotomy and we have relatively large holes in this 3D printed implant, uh, about 1.2 millimeters long, because we want to be able to insert the four shank neuropixels probes as well. Uh, despite the size of the craniotomy and the size of the, the recording holes, we actually get very stable recordings uh, throughout the entire session. So this is an example of, uh, uh, this is the data I believe from uh, the left image pictured here. Um, you can see that uh, the units or the activity stays very stable throughout the active, uh, or the location of the uh, active unit stays very stable throughout the duration of this almost 40 minute long recording. Uh, and when, when we spike sort uh, the data that we collected, you can also see that we can extract very good quality units that again, stay stable over the entire course of the recording as well. Um, and I believe uh, Dan Berman has already presented uh, the pinpoint software uh, in this course, but uh, our implant also interacts well with Pinpoint because you can upload or you can, um, yeah, load the uh, the CAD file for this implant in Pinpoint and actually plan out your trajectories uh, in this way. So in this case, you can see that uh, we use Pinpoint to pl plan out two trajectories. So in both uh, with both probes, we're aiming bilaterally for the stratum. Um, uh, and then same thing here. So again, this uh, this implant plays very well with other techniques used for planning uh, trajectories. All right, with that, uh, thank you very much. And I will be around to answer any questions that people have. <laughs>